In a previous video, we looked at an experimental study that was looking at the effects of sugar on levels of distraction. And in that video, we had kids watch a really boring program where they had to click a button if they saw an X, but refrain from clicking a button if they saw other letters. And we were measuring distraction in how many times the kids didn't click when they saw an X appear on the screen, so how many times they missed an X. And then we also had a number of experimental groups that we were looking at. So we had a zero gram sugar group, which was our control group. We had a 10 gram group, a 40 gram group, and an 80 gram group. And we said that these three were our experimental groups and that this one was our control group. And we said that we were going to be comparing our experimental groups to our control group because our control group provided a baseline. It showed us what kind of response we would see if we didn't have our experimental manipulation. In this case, we would say that our sugar level was our independent variable. And what do we mean by that? When I say that something is an independent variable, what I'm actually saying is that this is the variable that we are manipulating in order to see what its effects are. So I'm manipulating the levels of sugar in order to see what effect this would have on distraction. And so in this case, distraction would be our dependent variable. Or the variable that depends on the levels of the independent variable. So we have different sugar levels. And we want to see what effect these different sugar levels are going to have on distraction levels. An independent variable and dependent variable are terms that you're going to have to become really familiar with. And not just because questions about what they are are likely to come up on your exams, but also because understanding what each of these are will give you a better idea of how to set up experimental studies. And there are a bunch of ways to remember the differences between independent and dependent variables. One way to think about this, as I said before, is to think of the dependent variable as depending on the independent variable. It also might be helpful to think about the independent variable as the cause and the dependent variable as the effect or maybe the outcome. So different levels of sugar are causing different levels of distraction. And if those don't work for you, maybe try to remember that the independent variable is the one that you as the experimenter changes. So you control its levels and the dependent variable is the one that you are measuring. So we are controlling the levels of sugar and we are measuring distraction levels. Yet another way to think about this would be to think about the independent variable as the variable that we know. And we know the variables that are associated with it because we are the ones that define them. We are the ones who set them up. We know them because we chose them. And that would make the numbers associated with the dependent variable as the ones that we don't know. These are the ones that we're trying to measure. These are the ones that we're looking for. To move away from the sugar example, let's say that I wanted to do a study looking at how many students looked at a clock for different lengths of class time. And maybe I wanna use that as some kind of measure of how bored the students are. For this example, I can control the length of the class time. So maybe it's 50 minutes or 120 minutes, but I can't control the number of times the students look at the clock. Our independent variable, or our IV, would be class time. And our dependent variable, or DV, would be the number of times that a student looked at a clock. So the number of times that they checked the time. Or maybe I wanna look at how the amount of exercise we get during the day influences how much we sleep each night. In this case, our independent variable would be the amount of time someone spent exercising, so maybe the amount of hours that they run during the day. And this is something that we control. We can have participants come in and we can have them run different lengths. And then our dependent variable would be the number of hours that they sleep. So I have control over the amount of hours they run, but I don't have control over the number of hours that they sleep. The sleep is depending on the number of hours they run. Let's do one more. Let's look at how room temperature 
affects the amount of water that people drink. In this case, my independent variable would be room temperature, which I can set, which I have control over. And my dependent variable would be how much water the participants drank. So maybe we're looking at the amount of water left over in a pitcher at the end of the study. So in this case, the temperature is causing how much water that a participant drinks. We are controlling the temperature and we are measuring the amount of water that's left over in a pitcher. We know what the temperature is because we set it, but we don't know how much water they're going to drink and that's why we're trying to study it. All right, well, hopefully at least one of these explanations or shortcuts will help you remember the differences between independent and dependent variables. And if you can think of any that I missed or if you can think of anything else, please note them in the comments below.